Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we will be working on part two of our Christmas table runner. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I know and last week if you are joining us new firstly welcome. Uh, you haven't missed out on much. We did start this one here last week. If you want to do part one, part one is the green and red combination. The link to part one will be in the description box down below. The very first link you see will be part one of this tutorial. Okay, so go ahead, do part one, come back to us and, and do part two with us. Now, part two, not much difference. The only thing is we are using red and white. And also I'm talking about how many pieces you will need. And also I may give you a very short sneak preview of what part of the tutorial will look like towards the end yay <laughs> not all of it because i don't want to give away too much of the secret okay so i just want to say um before i go on that this was inspired by the candy cane i've been saying that to some of my um subscribers already and that the actual pattern itself was um inspired by the candy cane now you'll notice that when the actual pattern is finished but for now, we are working on part two. Now, uh, if you have done part one and you're complete, you should have either eight completed squares or six completed squares. Now, yours truly has done eight completed squares because I want my table runner to be nice and long. If you want the average table runner, you just need to do your six squares. If you have done six of these squares, then you need to do 12 of the white red. OK, if you have done eight like I have, then you need to do 16 of this particular square. So today we are only going to be doing one, so it doesn't concern us at all. We're just going to do this part right here. You will need, of course, your yarn. Now, I'm not sure what yarn you guys used. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's no big deal on the actual yarn. I just bought this one from Spotlight. I have to say... It's pretty and it's sparkly. You wouldn't want to make yourself a scarf with this because it might be a tad itchy. Unless that doesn't bother you, that's fine. But I would say this is more for a house yarn, um, making home products. However, if you are not bothered by itch, like yours truly is very bothered by it because of psoriasis and you know skin conditions, I would never wear this. However, as a table runner, it does look gorgeous. So we are going to make a gorgeous table runner with this. You've got your white, you've got your green. We will not need your green today. That's the reason why I've got the full um, skein. We're not going to use that at all. So we're going to put that aside completely. We will need the red and we will need your white. Okay. Today, you will also need, let's put these squares out of the way because you won't need those anymore. Well, actually, you won't even need this one. Okay. So you will need your four and a half millimeter hook or whatever hook size you used for your first squares. OK, you will need. Yes, yes, yes. You will need those scissors. And I'm afraid you will need your darning weaving sewing needle. Now, I'm not going to show you how to weave in those ends because that was shown on part one of the tutorial. So you may not need it for this particular tutorial. If you want to see the weaving, go and check out part one of this um, series now. Today we are working and we are starting with the red, okay? I'll just move the white out the way so it doesn't blur for us, okay? You will need to know the exact same stitches that you used for part one. So just a quick slip knot around your finger once and twice, hold it there. Pass the back loop halfway over, hold it there. Pass your front loop all the way over and pop your hook in. And there you go, give it a bit of a tug. All right, so we are going to start off by chaining four. Yarn over hook once and twice and three times and four times. So now we are going to slip stitch into that very first chain that you did right there. Pull the loop through, hold it there and pull it through your loop on your hook. Chain three, one, two, and three you are going to do a double crochet in that space that we just made right there try not to let go of anything because it all sort of falls apart if you do <laughs> so yarn over hook pop it through that space right there okay pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two yarn over hook pull through two loops on your hook okay so you've got your three chains that classifies as one double crochet in this round 
you've got your one double crochet. So yarn over hook, you're doing a third double crochet. Okay? So now you chain two, one and two. And you're still crocheting over that red thread and you do your normal double crochet. One, two, and three. And there you go. All right. So that is half of your square. So we are going to chain one, hold it there. We're going to grab our white. This is where it gets a little bit fiddly. Don't stress. So we're pulling up a loop through that chain. All right. Oh, don't lose it like I just did. <laughs> now you grab both your threads at the back. See those threads? The loose one of your white and your normal red one. Hold it there. Give your white a bit of a tug. You do want to close it up. And then you do a chain. All right. Give everything a bit of a tug. So you actually have a chain of the red. You slip stitch through and you've got a chain of the white. And now you're going to do a normal double crochet. We're going to crochet over that red right there. A little bit fiddly. You may find that a little bit loose. Just give it a gentle tug, not too much. Okay, and you're going to do another one. Now, if you're not sure how that, how well that was, just, you know, rewind this video or go into part one of the series and check out part one. I did it twice for you in part one. So we're chaining, we've done our three double crochets, we're chaining two, one and two. And now we're doing another three double crochets. And this is the end of the square. We need to slip stitch to join in a minute. So there's your third double crochet. Just bring that, because I've been crocheting over this end, just pop it way at the back. Okay. Now we need to chain two before we join, one and two, and then we're going to find, we have to find the chain, the top of the chain on this side right here. A little bit hard to see with the red. Slip stitch through and then through again. Okay, and there you go. Now, Ordinarily, we would chain up three and keep going in the round. No, not for this particular square. We want it to look three-dimensional. So we're going to turn. Pop your hook in your space and pull up a loop. And then pull it through the stitch on your hook. You just formed a slip stitch, okay? Now you're going to chain up three. One, two, and three. It's a little bit too close now. Sorry, guys. And then you do two double crochets in the same space. Okay, so you've got the chain three, which you just did. You've got two double crochets. That classifies as three double crochets. So now we're going to jump into that next corner there and do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. It's called a double cluster set. Okay, whenever you do three double crochets, it's a cluster set. One, two, in this pattern, and actually this piece here, this space, and when you do a corner, it's a double cluster set. So you might hear me say, put a double cluster set or a cluster set. Okay, so this is a double cluster set. All right, in your next corner, you're only going to put one cluster set of the white. Now, I like to pull that thread over a little bit and I crochet over that just a little bit. You don't need to, but I do that just to help me later. One. Now, you might find that the red will get a bit loose. Give it a gentle tug and then do two and three so you've got three double crochets it's one cluster set of the white chain one because we're going to pick up that red now this is where it gets a little fiddly i might bring that nice and close for you so we've chained one on the white okay we are going to pull a loop through with the red like so okay then we chain one on the red give the white a gentle tug not too much or it will tighten up pop your hook under that red pull up a loop hold it there pop it all into the space pull up a loop you should have three loops on your hook if you've got more you've done the stitch wrong okay two and then two i'm going to take this undone and do it again because i want you to see that again so you chain one of the white pop it at the back grab the red loop pull the loop through like so Chain one of the red, 
just give it a bit of a tug pop your hook under the red pull up a loop pop your hook in the space pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two yarn over hook pull through the last two a little bit thick there but you can't tell that later when it's all in space put a normal double crochet uh, in the space and another double crochet we are going to pop into that next corner and put a double cluster set I like this corner because you don't have to do anything different you know it's like a normal um, granny square this corner the rest is a little bit fiddly next row will be different again chain one and two and in your cluster set because next row we will have to add a middle cluster set just one set in the middle of each side okay and okay so now we are going to jump into that space we are going to do three double crochets that's your corner space it's actually at the end of the row here okay two and three we want to join these two together so we're chaining one and two and then we pop your hook in the top chain like we did before pull the loop through there and through the hook the loop on your hook sorry turn your work slip stitch into the space like we did before and then chain up three one two three this is the third row so we've done one row one row two rows and now we're on to our third row so you chain three done a double crochet you're going to do another double crochet now this is where I said you can, you you now need to do a cluster set in the middle of this row so that's your corner and that's your corner we've got a space so now we have to do a normal cluster set in the middle of the row that's just three double crochets two and three all right and now we are going to put a double cluster set in the corner and you know what that is three two three just remember that three double crochets chain two and three double crochets this is a very basic pattern the only thing that's difficult is the joining of those threads once you get the hang of that the rest is really basic guys and I'm finding it a lot easier to work with the white and the red in this particular yarn it's a lot softer than the green was I found the green a little bit um, rough on my hands we are going to jump into that space before the corner and we're going to put three double crochets yeah it doesn't you know uh, the yarn doesn't affect a lot of people it does with me my skin is very sensitive so um, this yarn would be no good on my skin which is the reason why I use it for um, home decorating okay so we are going to put our three double crochets of the red in there so that's one two and three Give a nice close-up for this part all right we're going to chain one like we normally do there we go drop your yarn at the back you can hold it with your hand there grab your white pull the loop through it is a little bit fiddly once you get the hang of it it's easy chain one remember yarn under that thread I mean hook under the thread sorry guys pull up a loop hold it there pop your hook in your space pull up a loop yarn pull through two yarn pull through two all right very simple might be a little bit loose just give it a gentle tug at the back and then you do your two double crochets in the same space one and two you may find that um, your yarns here will get a little bit tangled just you know move it around okay it's nothing you can't fix all right, so we are going to put, oh, it's too far away now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we are going to put three double crochets in that space. We still haven't finished the row yet. One, two. Oh, it's a little bit too far again. And three. All right. Then we are going to put three double crochets in your chain space I mean three double crochets your double cluster set three two three two and three one and two and then three double crochets pretty easy huh two three 
two and three. Now remember this, we have a space before the corner. We are going to put three double crochets in that space. One, two, and three. All right. Then we hop into the corner and we do three double crochets. One, two, and three. All right. So we chain two. One and two. And then what we did earlier, remember? Oh, let's get a nice close up so you can see. We just slip stitch into the top of that third chain right there. My nice tight stitch there. There you go. Loop through, loop through. I'm just going to pull up a loop and leave it there because what I want you to do now is to go around. Oh, that's too far. To go around, 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 around until you get to, and let's see how many we've got. Uh, one, two, three, four, five rounds. We've done one, two, three. You only need to do another two more rounds, okay? So keep going around and around until you do another two more rounds. When you get to the end, I shall meet you up. Remember, when you go to the next row, you will have two spaces in between your corner. So you need to do your corners there. Then you do a cluster set, cluster set, double cluster set, cluster set, cluster set. And then you do your special join. Is that the special join? Yes. Then you do your cluster, 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 double cluster, 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 and there you go. Your end of row. Okay. Do that for two more rows and I shall meet you up. All right. Here we are at the end of the row. I'm going to do my last cluster set. One, two, and three. Chain one. I'm sorry. And two. <laughs> and then slip stitch to join. Pull the loop through, pull up a loop as long as you like, give it a cut and we are done. All right, so what you have done is you have completed, that shouldn't be there, that should be pulled through there, right there, like that. All right, oh, I forgot to, uh, by the way, guys, <laughs> don't do what I do. I keep forgetting to cut that last red every time I make one of these pieces. All right, so here we go. You now officially have your square yay <laughs> how gorgeous is the square i'm really loving the sparkles of this yarn it's been a little bit hard to see with the white but when it's put together now i don't know if i mentioned the beginning of the promo i think i did that i would show you a sneak peek of what i would like it to look like yay <laughs> now it's only part of what it's supposed to look like because the border really closes it all up and makes it look gorgeous now there'll only be two rows of the border at this stage um, unless it doesn't look complete I might do another two rows again but I don't think so I think we'll be doing two rows of the border now border we don't need to discuss until we sort these out so I'm about to show you I can't show you a lot because we don't have much space uh, give me one second and I'll figure out the pattern. Ta-da! <laughs> That's part of it. It's still not complete there, guys. What it's giving is a kind of a candy cane swirl look. Now, until it's all together, you can't really see it well. You can see it a little bit by looking at it from top down. Okay, so you've got, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I still need six, seven, eight further up. And then I need the whole 16 pieces. So it's going to look gorgeous. There will be that border that will close it up and make it look very candy cane as well. So this is just a sneak preview of what it may look like. So don't get excited yet, guys, because it's not complete, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so what we're going to do, this was part two today. Part three is going to be washing and blocking. I'm going to do a very small session on washing and blocking. I'm just going to show you how to block um, maybe one or even two. And then you can go ahead and block your um, 16 plus, what was I saying? 16 and 8, 16 and 8. Quick, everybody do your maths. <laughs> 3 eighths, 24. <laughs> I told you I failed maths. <laughs> Not my forte. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and do all your squares. Get them ready. Is it necessary to wash and block? I'm going to discuss that on the next tutorial. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. This was part two of our tutorial. Um, the uh, red and white combination. Don't forget, guys, if you would like to get further tutorials in your inbox, you need to click on the uh, subscribe button 
and on the bell button and receive all to get all your um, information in your inbox. So thank you so much for joining us at part two of The Table Runner. Don't forget to join us this time next week for part three. Thanks so much for watching and guess what guys? Ciao for now.